All right, so if you guys are aware, uh, AMD is not done with the uh, AM4 socket. So they have uh, a 5800X that's supposed to come out sometime in the spring, maybe next month in April. Uh, but it's going to be a different 5800X. They're calling it a 5800X 3D. And what that means is uh, it's a 5800X in terms of being an 8-core CPU, but it has 3D cache, which is lower latency, makes the processor faster. Supposedly, it's going to be about 15% faster IPC, which is great, which is That's awesome. Decent. Uh, as long as it's not 15% yeah, I mean, more in price. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. Aww. Well, that's not the thing, but that's that's kind of the thing. So the 5800X came out a while ago. I don't remember exactly when. And the 5800X 3D is supposedly going to be adopting that MSRP of, I think, 449 So... What was the old one's price? Same? Yeah, 449 Oh, okay. That's cool. The thing is, at this point in time, you can go to Micro Center and get a 5800X non-3D for like two ninety nine. So, oh, <laughs> is it is it worth it? Maybe. Uh, for the, it's probably going to be the best IPC on the market, AMD or Intel, uh, for the time being. Uh, with that, you can't overclock this processor. That's the word on the street. Apparently, AMD has been reaching out to board partners and saying, yeah, well, you know those those uh, overclocking features that are in the BIOS? Yeah, I need you to just uh, take all those out for this chip. <laughs> and, uh, Which is kind of, why did they have the X nomenclature if that's the case, right? Well, the X never meant overclock. Really? What did X mean? Other than extreme? It just, it just meant it was more performant. Uh, so like if you had like the 3000 series, they had the 3700 eight core mm -hmm. and then they had the 3700 X, which was just a faster eight core. And then they had the 3800 X, which is a faster eight core yet again. But I think the X and this isn't across the line, but in the case of like the eight cores, if it's a non X, it's like a 65 watt chip. And if it's like a 5800 X, 3700 X, they're 105 watt TDP. Um, it's definitely more powerful, but it doesn't refer to overclocking because even without the X, all the Ryzen chips up to this point have been unlocked multiplier chips. So they could be overclocked regardless. Um, CCP. With that being, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, I'll go ahead and read it. Uh, the 3D chips are not going to be worth it. Lower clock speed is a bummer. Okay. Well... I don't know if I agree with that because if it's 15% better IPC, then I don't mind a little hit to the, the clock speed because it's going to be faster overall. Um, that being said, I think this is kind of like a, they're probably using this chip as sort of like a trial anyway in manufacturing before the next uh, lineup comes out, which I'm sure they're working on as we speak, but um, this whole 3D cache thing is probably something that can be added or subtracted in manufacturing without redoing the entire thing. So um, apparently it creates a lot of problems with heat and <laughs> yeah, uh, or it could potentially be uh, sensitive to heat. So they don't want it to be running crazy out of spec. It might be a sa the same situation uh, with it being sensitive to um, voltage discrepancies. So if you were to overclock it, undervolt it, overvolt it, the cache might behave, uh, you know, in, in ways that are unpredictable for the chip and cause stability problems. Uh, in any event, we'll see what happens. Um, we have a couple other people, older BIOS, maybe. I don't think, I think this new processor is going to use a different CPU ID, uh, CPU microcode, and therefore, not be supported in older BIOSes. Yeah, it's not going to be recognized. Well, I suppose if you knew how to program it, you could make it work, but... That, no, that's so much work. It's so much that, work. That's what I mean. You, me. you have to hack them first, like NVIDIA. I mean, whoa, oops. It's not only that. <laughs> it's not only adding the microcode in AMD's case. You used to be able to just throw microcode in a BIOS. 
Uh, but it's like when they release a new BIOS and especially a new chip, they release that that new Adjasa, whatever, all those instructions mm -hmm. that are built into the BIOS that communicate with the chip. And that's going to be probably a brand new release once this uh, chip oh, comes out. Oh, man. Probably... <laughs> Sounds like work. <laughs> yeah. So when you're, especially when you're jumping from like, this cache thing is not really a subtle change, even though they use the same die. Um, with that, though, that chip is supposed to come out in this this spring, and it looks like AMD is going to have a few other chips coming out at the same time. So what we can expect to see is another 8-core chip known as the 5700X. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe 5700X. Maybe uh, Let me double-check that. Uh, yeah, 5700X, which uh, is another 8-core chip. As, uh, as we know, like the 3700X was an 8-core chip. Uh, we can also expect to see a 5700, uh, rather a 5600 non-X and a 5500. And supposedly all of these are going to have, not the 5800X 3D, all of these other chips are going to have a 65 watt TDP. So maybe something uh, that you might see in some more OEM computers, but also something if you're just looking for a more basic chip and you don't mind doing the overclocking yourself, to get that extra performance out. You know, overclocking has been less of a thing with the 5000 series Ryzen because they're so well optimized for boosting out of the box. So these so lower end chips might actually, on. yeah, so these lower end chips might not be as good because even if you overclock them, at that point, you're gonna have uh, a higher multiplier. You might have more power consumption for the same performance because you're not using the same boost tables. Um, but anyway, these chips, these other chips are going to be targeted toward price points that compete better with Intel's 12th gen offerings. And in addition to the desktop chips, AMD also will be, uh, releasing some Threadripper Pro Zen 3 chips, but we are only going to see them in OEM PCs for now, such as the Lenovo ThinkStation workstations. Um, and that's not really uncommon. So... Um, now let me just finish this up. Left out, though, are the high-end desktop chips, the regular Threadrippers on the TRX40 platform. Nowhere to be found and otherwise abandoned at this time. Mm. So AMD has the desktop chips, the Ryzen lineup. Then they have the high-end desktop, which is the Threadripper. And then they have like the workstation class CPUs, which is the Threadripper Pro, offers more CPU lanes and is a completely different socket than the regular Threadrippers. So the Threadripper Pros are going to be Zen 3 and starting out in OEMs only. And I believe that's how they started out with the Zen 2 ones anyway. Uh, and then they eventually made it to market. Sort of like we saw with um, the uh, Zen 3 APUs, like the 5700G, 5600G. You could only get those in OEM computers or from like AliExpress for the longest time. But now they're on Micro Center shelves, Newegg, Amazon, everywhere. So they start out OEM only and ease into the market. But yeah, it seems like a regular Threadripper TRX40 platform is not going to be something uh, prioritized in AMD's future. They're kind of bypassing the high-end desktop and saying, well, either you're a desktop user or you're a workstation user. You know, if you need more than 16 cores, you can afford the workstation uh, Epic platform. Rome. <laughs> well, Epic's a whole nother thing, but uh, yeah. Uh, and I, I don't know, man. Like, I totally understand where they're coming from, honestly. It was like the high-end desktop platform is such a small market to begin with. And uh, like, unless you're going over 16 cores, it just doesn't need to exist. I mean, some might argue, but the PCI Express lanes. Yeah, but I, I mean, what think... kind of device is? Yeah, I don't it's think still, like... it's increasingly more niche. Yeah, like ninety because... percent of people aren't going to ever use more than four cores, to be honest. Yeah, but like also, uh, as we go into the future, we have motherboards that already have two point five, five gig, ten gig uh, network cards integrated to, into the board so you don't need an adding card for that you have uh some boards have decent enough raid controllers you don't need a raid card anymore mm -hmm. uh, 
and even with desktop boards you still have pretty good support for the number of devices you can have like two or three m.2s two or three by 16 pci express slots like yeah it's just it's just a niche market so i i can understand why they're not prioritizing it uh they're still supporting the professionals that use the workstation platform uh albeit a bit more expensive definitely uh, but yeah that's pretty much it i think the most exciting thing there is the lower end chips mm -hmm. like i would i would be interested in seeing what the 5500 has to offer uh even the 5600 and the thing is pricing is going to be a little bit interesting that's not that's not really discussed yet because we've already seen price drops in these Zen 3 chips. Micro Center always does even less than everyone else. So like you can get a 5600X for 199 as it is. So where is this 5600 going to come into the lineup? You know what I mean? So um, why don't we catch up on chat? Because we just went quite yeah, a bit. A lot that. of people have joined since. So why okay. don't you uh, respond to that? Uh, we let's start at Nemesis when he joined. Is that the uh, yo? Yeah, start right there while okay, you're doing okay, that. Right. I'm gonna check something. <laughs> What's up, Nemesis? What's going on, man? Uh, CPPC Tech says it just feels like a marketing ploy to get rid of leftover chips before they switch to AM5. Um, I mean maybe, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Like, if AM4 was, like, a terrible platform with terrible performance, I'd say wait for the next thing. But if you build a, a, a Zen 3 computer right now from scratch and, like, you don't have something right now and you want to build a computer, you're going to be really happy with it. Uh, there's always going to be the next thing that's better, but there's absolutely nothing wrong, in my opinion, with any of the 5000 series chips. 